salut, uh, mon nom est Mark. Uh, th yeah, th that's all the Romanian I have. That <laughs> right. Um, I'm really pleased we set the bar low uh, already for this. Um, yeah, uh, really nice to be here. Um, six years ago, uh, I left uh, my job uh, as an English teacher uh, to become a full-time poet. Um, and I found it quite a shock to the system. Uh, you know, there's no more salary, uh, no more set working hours, uh, hardly anyone asking me whether they go to the toilet anymore. Uh, on top of this, I find I have this new label, right, of being a poet, and I was finding it really difficult to adapt to the label of being a poet. Growing up, I didn't know any poets, and I found that I was going to things and meeting people, and most people I meet, they haven't met poets either, really. They're often quite surprised that I even exist. I find it's a little bit... Like, introducing yourself like a poet sometimes feels a little bit like introducing yourself as some kind of unicorn or something. Um, at the same time, um, it's like quite a hefty label, right? And, and, and I, I'd started writing and, and trying to be this poet, um, and I was really struggling creatively. For the first six months of being a poet, I, I don't know what was there. It was some kind of block. I couldn't get anything written. Whatever I tried, I, I got really anxious, and I started worrying. I thought, like, you become a poet, and that's the point you can't write poems anymore. That's not very good. And I started to feel like I was failing, and I made, like, a really bad decision. I didn't know what I was going to do about it. Um, but at the same time, right, I was very fortunate because I, um, I had a girlfriend. She was amazing. Her name was Lucy, um, and... Like, she was really kind, really intelligent, really beautiful, and really supportive in helping me work out what I was trying to do with this. And one day, uh, we'd been going, to, going out for a while, Lucy said to me, I'd like you to meet my mum. Would you be up for that? And, and, and I was like, yeah, cool. Like, I really didn't want to mess this up, and I thought, yeah, that sounds great. And Lucy said, uh, are you, sh all right, I should warn you, um, she's quite intimidating, uh, she just, she's, she's quite protective of me. She really cares that I'm, 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 I'm all right. And she's kind of scared a few boyfriends in the past. And I'm like, well, it can't be that bad, right? It'd be all right. So, so we, we get in the car and we drive out to go and see her. Mom. Her name's Sally. And she lives out in the country in this little cottage. And as we turn up, I'm kind of, you know, trying to work out what to do. But we can't park our, on the drive of, 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 of the house. Because um, there's like a motorbike there and all these motorbike parts. Um, I think Sally like, was in a few motorbike gangs um, in the past, right? So we, we, we meet her and I'm a bit awkward and, and she goes in the other room to make this roast dinner and I'm sat in the sitting room while Lucy is with Sally in the other room making this meal. And because she kind of lives out in the middle of the countryside, I don't think she realizes how loud she is. The walls are quite thin. And I can hear her saying to Lucy as I'm waiting, What's he do then? Like, what's his actual job? And Lucy goes, oh, he's, he's a poet, right? And I can hear, like, her kind of getting her head around this label as well. And she says, well, is he a good poet? Right? <laughs> and Lucy says, he's all right. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then Sally says, but if he's a poet... He's not going to have any money. Like, he's not going to be able to look after you. He's going to be sponging off you your whole, your whole life. Do you not, I know I've said it in the past, do you not think you could do a little bit better than this? And I'm in the other room thinking, oh, this is quite, this is quite bad. And then they come through and we, we start having this roast dinner and it's, it's the best roast dinner I've ever had. And in the UK, we care about roast dinners a lot, right? So it's lovely. And Sally starts talking to me about what it means to be a poet and she's trying to get her head around it. And she says things like, um, so Lucy tells me you're a poet how many books of poetry have you published? Right. And I go, oh, uh, uh, none, Sally. Uh, I mostly perform poems live, like in, in pubs or at libraries and stuff. And, and, and she's like, well, you don't publish books. Like, proper poets are supposed to be on the page. And, and I've, I've been used to that in the past because I'm a performance poet. And, and, and I go, well, I, I don't really write stuff, stuff like that. And it's a bit awkward. And then she says, um, well, who are your inspirations? And I go, oh, okay, like uh, Holly McNish, uh, Tim Clare, Rob Orton, poets that I know in the UK that I've, I've, I've seen perform and I think are amazing. And she doesn't know who any of those people are. So she goes, well, what about Byron? What about Ted Hughes? What about Tennyson? What about Sylvia Plath? And I find myself going, oh, yeah, like I don't really have much to do with those guys, really. Like, I'm aware of their work. I used to teach them as a teacher. You kind of go through this motion of kind of repeating a lot of the same poems a lot of the time. But personally, as a writer, I don't draw any real inspiration from them. And she stopped and looked at me. And she said, 
that's a pity. And then ate a bit of her food and looked at me again and said, because they were quite successful. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I said, no, you're right. You, 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 of course, Sally, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, maybe I'll think about it. And as we left in the car, Lucy said, well, that wasn't that bad. And I was like, no, that was quite bad. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And, and I thought, what can I do to not be in this situation again? And I thought, well, I've got a bit of spare time. Maybe what I could do is I could travel around the country and find out more about these poets. Maybe I could visit a few poets' graves, right? If I go and visit a poet's grave and I learn about them, and maybe even as I learn about these poets, I could like write poems that, like inspired by the things I learn about or try and do something like that. Then, then next time Sally says to me, what about this poet? I can go, ah, well, yes, they're buried over here. They did all these things in their life and actually inspired me to write this. So, so we'd have this kind of like, she'd understand how I related to their work. So the first poet I decided to go for... Um, was someone that she'd mentioned at the dinner, right? I, I, went, uh, I went for Ted Hughes, uh, National Laureate, big deal. Uh, and I found out that he's, um, he doesn't have a gravestone, but he has a plaque out in Dartmoor. Um, uh, and I thought, right, I'll take my rucksack, I'll go out, I'll find the plaque. Uh, it looks a bit like this, right? Someone's just written onto a stone in the middle of nowhere. So I took my rucksack out, went to find it, searched for two hours, uh, got lost, um, thought I'd found it, uh, and it turned out that it was just a sewage outlet. Um, but... <laughs> I sat by the sewage outlet and I wrote the first poem I'd written in weeks, right? And I, and I really enjoyed it, just focusing on that one thing. And then I, I left that and I started visiting more, like, poets' uh, graves. Like, I, I went and, like, learned more about Tennyson. I learned more about Sylvia Plath, like, uh, Christina Rossetti, like, Philip Larkin. Um, and as I was writing all these pieces, I started to feel a little bit better about my own writing as well. I don't have time to read you all these, but I thought I'd read you one, uh, if that's all right. Um, I wrote this based upon a poet like about halfway through the journey that I learned about like Byron, right? I, I already taught some of Byron's work when I was a teacher, um, but here he is. Um, I found it really hard to find a way to connect with Byron. Um, he, he killed people, right, in jewels. He had supposedly over 200 affairs uh, in one year alone with many married men and women, and he showed no remorse. None of this is very suitable for like me to write a poem for Sally about, right? Um, but the one thing that... <laughs> that he did care about, I found out, was his dog. Uh, he had a dog called Boson, and they were inseparable. Here's an artist's interpretation of Boson. Uh, he went everywhere with Boson, and when Boson finally died, Byron was distraught. He locked himself away, and when he emerged, he said he was going to spend a fortune on a, uh, a, a tomb for his dog that no one could ever like, uh, get into. And he wrote a huge poem on the side of this tomb about how great his dog is. And I thought, well, I could do that, right? Like, Lucy and I, we, we just moved in together and we just got our own first dog. It's not like Boson uh, in the poem that Byron wrote. Uh, he said that Boson uh, contained uh, beauty without vanity, strength without insolence, and courage without ferocity. Uh, my dog is a pug. Uh, this is her. Her name is Boo. Um, so uh, in many ways, it's kind of um, vanity without any beauty, um, insolence without any real strength, and... Uh, ferocity without any actual courage at all. Um, but I figured, like, I could give it a go, right? Um, so this, um, this is how I try to get my, my head around that. Um, the problem is, though, when I say that I've got a pug, a lot of people say that that's not actually a proper dog, right? And I don't know. Perhaps they're right. When it came the time to choose a dog, she wasn't what I had in mind. I thought I'd get a massive dog that stomped with great big loping strides. I thought at least I'd get something that seemed a little dog-like. Not all squashed up, wheezing, frog-like, with an ugly mug that's cross-eyed. When it came the time to choose a dog, I thought a pug is just the wrong type. For a start, we checked online. There's tons of sites that say a pug is not a proper dog. There's a range of reasons given because of overzealous breeding. Pugs have problems with their breathing. They're pretty much always sneezing. And apart from objects here and here, they struggle just to see things. So for that and tons of reasons, I figured pugs were off the table. Until we went to see one. And she was pretty cute. So we did something pretty stupid, right? We called her Boo and took her home. She's now my dog. I've been pleased to note that she is capable of doggy things. I've witnessed her both lick and sniff. The dining room has loads of stains from all the time. She's weed in it. She farts, poos, nibbles things. She chews her way through everything. She sleeps most days in her snoring grates. She even snores when she's awake. It's like the noise that I think Darth Vader would make if he ran every leg 
of a relay race. I'm the first to say she's really strange, but I also think that she's pretty great. And I took her out the other time. Oh, it's not even this. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you. And I took her out the other day to the local pub where everybody loves her. And one by one, the regulars will make a massive fuss of her and she's wagging to the point that her bum could nearly wander off until one guy at the bar, he shouts over, starts mouthing off, Oi, mate, that ain't a proper dog. That's a rat you've got. Be careful you don't trip on it. I hear that every now and then. And every time, I grin a bit. Because it's exactly the same routine that follows, right? She'll wag and run up to his chair and he'll scowl from high above her till her form isn't proper until eventually he starts fussing her and then he's totally in love with her. And I don't care about his opinion or that he changes his perspective. What I care about and what I love is I think Boo is really quite impressive. All right, so her bark is more of a cough. She's lopsided when she walks. She can't really fetch a stick unless the stick is really small. And he didn't even know about her fear of basketballs. What's proper great about my dog is she doesn't care at all, right? She's happy and she's loving. And she thinks that she is great. And I know that there's been times that I didn't feel the same because I've been in a lot of places where people have said that I'm not a proper poet. And it hurt a bit. I stopped producing work as if they'd found my art's Achilles. But since booze arrived, I'm like, well, screw those guys. The labels all seem silly because, yeah, proper poets and proper dogs. I've pictured it. I don't want it much. It reeks of class and not of love. Just lonely labels, stuffy stuff that's really dull and cumbersome. It's all right for some, but it's just not us. We're Boo and Mark. We're poet and dog. Perhaps we're not the proper ones. But you can't deny that we poo and we write in the same field as all the other ones. So I'm dead happy with my puppy. There's no way that I'd swap her just because some self-professed expert says there's dogs that are more proper. I don't want another version. She's something I take delight in. And if I ever met a proper person, I don't think that I'd like them. Cool. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks. How long am I doing on time? We've got three minutes. Oh, cool. Cool. Thank you. Um... Um, in the end, I managed to visit uh, over 48 different poets' graves. Uh, I'm getting towards the end of it now. I managed to write enough poems that I actually managed to get a book to put together. Um, so Sally was happy, but you know what? I think I've been happy too. I started thinking more and more about stuff that I learned when I was a teacher. Right? Um, we talk about uh, labelling quite a lot. As a teacher, they're really useful for like folders, uh, like for shelves, folders, and for working out whose jumper's been left behind in the classroom. But with people, they're not that useful. If you see a student bullying someone and you like, intervene, uh, if you talk about their behavior and say like, that was bullying behavior, you label the behavior, they're able to think about what they're doing and they're able to adapt and come up with new ideas and change what they're working on. If you label them as a person and say, instead, you're a bully, apart from being quite confrontational, um, it's not helpful, right? Because a person is not a static thing. They're not that it's not that simple. And it still works with positive labels. In the UK, we talk about gifted and talented. Uh, students are identified as being gifted and talented, and we've decided increasingly that we do not inform students of that. Because as soon as you're told that you're gifted in something, you start to get anxious and you can't produce work because you're worried about what it means. Um, I really enjoyed uh, the challenge that Sally set me on, uh, and I managed to feel much more comfortable with what I was doing. I even kind of covered this guy, Sir Walter Raleigh, and a bunch of other poets uh, as we went through. Um, but finally, I got like a whole new label at the end of it, which is um, great, and I'm really pleased to have. Um, uh, oh, I should say, first of all, um, the reason I'm here in Romania is because the end of my tour is going to be with Nishita Sinescu, because um, I found out as I was going through this that uh, Nishita said once in an interview, there are no poets, only poems. And I think the moment I stopped thinking about being a poet and started thinking about the poems, that's when things become became much more useful. Um, uh, I have my own label now. Uh, I'm a husband. Uh, we got married uh, last year, and I'm so pleased that we had Sally uh, on the side who came to join us <laughs> on the day. Um, and um, uh, on the day of my wedding, for the first time, I felt comfortable enough with the title poet to put it on, my, uh, on the wedding certificate as my occupation. Although I would just like to say, as I leave you now, I think I would prefer to say that I engage in poetic behavior. Thanks very much. Thank you.